everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to receive payments against invoices you've created for your tenants in QuickBooks Online. All right, let's get started. Let's go into this one. Okay, so it shows we're in the customer. Let's click this little button. Now, this is like the normal view I always see. So you can see here, Jim Bell owes $2,000 and he viewed it. This is one I think I opened. So again, I think you should normally go in and click just right here on the line item. Your issue is if you have someone that has a lot of money that they owe. Okay, so let's say this person, look at these, overdue, overdue. Oh, and these, these are ones I featured out. So what is, what's 1985 times two? 3,970 is overdue. Well, what do you do if they don't pay all of it? So let's say they make a payment. This is what really trips people up is that these tenants are paying random amounts. Okay, so it's gonna be one amount. So um, honestly, I don't, there's no point in payments to deposit other than to batch perfect payments because you can't do it any. So chase checking. And I'm gonna say that instead the tenant paid 3,500, it is going to apply these their own way. Um, but sometimes they write on their check that they want a certain amount applied and then another way. And like they could skip a whole month. But mind you, if someone gives you instructions on how to apply their check, you need to follow it. So let's say they said they wanted to pay in full for March and then the rest they're going to pay here. So you look at didn't do the right amount. So then you go 3,500, take away 1985. So make sure you follow if they write any notation on the check of what months they want to do. Sometimes tenants, even though they're three months behind, I mean, we want to just always apply it to the oldest, but sometimes they want to be like current and then keep catching up on the back rent. Okay, you just do that, save and close. So let's say you get three payments at once. You're gonna go here and you're gonna receive the payment. Let's say a check. You're gonna go payments to deposit. Okay, so you receive two checks. You're gonna go over here, you know, you kind of like wiggle into the left and then it pops out. Click new, bank deposit. And let's say we just realized we went researching and we found this in our drawer. I kid you not, people find checks in their drawers for months. And it's usually because someone calls and says, you never cashed my check. So let's say you found this check that you've been holding for two months and you have all three of these. So just make sure you pick the right um, bank account, okay? And you have all your checks together and you would make your deposit ticket and then save and close. I'll just show you what that looks like. So it says, look, accounts receivable. This one says split because it's multiple checks. So it can't really tell you who's in that. You'd go that way. This one, I posted to paint for eight. So what, why it's showing this is it's really only one, but I didn't go straight to Chase Bank. Instead, I put it to payments deposit and then brought it through because I thought I was gonna be able to show you how to do a negative 180 in there. And then again, this one went straight to Chase. This is building to Jennifer Jones post against accounts receivable. Here's the thing to watch for. When you're posting and doing payments, I want you to do two things. I want you to come and get really familiar with your check register. If you ever see, and you're invoicing your tenants, you're like creating invoices and receiving payments. If you see anything that looks like, hold on and all, 
Okay, guys, look if this happens. And uh, see how we have these ones that all say accounts receivable. They're either saying accounts receivable or payments to deposit. That's good. And all of yours should say that, or they should say split because you posted multiple payments against invoices. But if you go in your register and you see anything that's just straight to rental income, you have a problem. That means you skipped a step and you didn't receive the payment on the client's tenant's account, okay? You can't do this because, let's see, this is, let's say this is the duplicate and this is really unit, building one, unit two, and let's see. Okay. Let's say th these are for the same units. One is a payment done correctly by receiving it against the tenant's account. This one's straight to income. You can't have that. So you need to go delete that and make sure you're doing it the right way. This is how your um, accounts receivable gets thrown out of whack right away. So you should be going in here and then tying to your bank account. But most importantly, really look at what you're posting and what you're doing. Because if you're not checking what you're doing, it's worthless. Okay. All right. Um, I hope this helped you learn how to post payments for your tenants' accounts. All right. Have a great day.